Happy New Year. We're glad to see you this morning. We're, the, uh, those of you who have uh, joined us in person, uh, we're thankful always, as always, for you uh, being here with us, um, especially in times like these, which we'll talk a little bit about in just a moment. Um, but uh, And for those who are watching online, we wish you a very happy new year as well, and we're glad you've joined us. I know there are uh, probably a few more than normally uh, we have watching online this morning because of... Uh, uh, of the times that we're in, and so we're glad that you're able to be here uh, virtually as we worship together on this uh, second uh, day of 2022. Um, if you're new to us uh, online, please uh, let us know that by typing something in the comments like, hey, I'm new, or, or whatever you'd like to let us know. Uh, we invite you to do that. And for those who are here, if you're on Facebook, uh, don't forget that when we um, especially since we're not going to be reading a whole lot uh, this morning. Um, re remember to say hello to the folks who have joined us online. Um, now, just a word about uh, where we are in terms of, of health and safety. Um, you'll notice that uh, for those who are at home, uh, it is Communion Sunday, and so we invite you to take this time to get some uh, bread and or crackers and grape juice or apple juice or whatever you're going to use, water uh, to ready for that. And if you're here this morning, and I've lost mine. Hold on. It's here somewhere. Here it is. So if you're here this morning, um, we are going back to uh, the individual communion elements. Uh, they are uh, there by in the basket by the door where you came in. So please, during the prelude or first hymn or whatever, go grab one uh, so that you have it available uh, for the time of communion. And uh, they have the wafer and the cup uh, the juice is there, um, and, and they're in that basket. So you'll want to have those ready um, as well. We also are uh, asking you if you are um, near somebody uh, to, uh, and really encouraging people to wear masks um, and wear distance. So if you're able to do that, we, we ask you to, to spread out. Um, there, are, there, there is plenty of room. And uh, so we encourage you to uh, be safe and healthy. That's our, our goal is to make sure that everybody um, that, that gathers uh, does um, do so safely and, and without uh, spreading whatever it is that's going around. So all that being said, um, we're happy this morning to have uh, Caleb Westcott with us, uh, sharing in a special music and also in the prelude, and uh, uh, use this time to prepare your hearts uh, for worship on this first Sunday of the new year. still my soul the Lord is on your side with patience bear the cross of grief or pain leave to thy God to order and provide change God faithful And we 
winds still know the Christ who ruled them while he dwelt below. So the hour is hastening on when we shall be forever with the Lord when disappointment, grief, and fear they're gone. Sorrow for God. Love's purest joy is restored. Be still, my soul, when change and tears are past. All safe and blessed we shall meet at last. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this new year. We thank you for all the opportunities that, that we enter it with, the hopes that we have, the, um, the, the um, good news that, that you enter this with, year with us. And so this morning as we worship you, we give you thanks for your faithfulness uh, to us through the past, in the past, and we just ask that you would help us to sense you with us, to know your presence, to feel your spirit guiding us and strengthening us for the days ahead. Be with us as we share in this hour of worship together in Jesus' name. Amen. So as you stand and sing our opening hymn, I'm going to run out and grab a Band-Aid because I sliced my finger on the candle later trying to, trying to make the wick go up. So I'm going to go grab a Band-Aid, but we're going to stand and sing together uh, hymn number 253. This is Epiphany, um, We Three Kings. The words will be on the screen.
Take a moment to turn and greet someone who's uh, near you. And again, don't forget the folks who are watching at home. <clears throat> and at this time, let me invite the children who are here to uh, join us for our brown bag time. And then also, if you're watching at home, um, hopefully you'll uh, gather around as well. So good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thanks. So I have a question for you. Um, well, actually, let me let me start by saying, um, a lot of times we kind of people kind of behave in ways that we expect. Meaning that that um, typically your parents might behave one way, your brothers brothers might behave one way, or if you have a sister, um, she might behave one way. So I have some. Um, um, some things here, some statements here, and I want to use this so I don't miss any of them. Um, and uh, I want you to tell me who it is that you would, would typically say this to you, okay? Um, so the first one is um, clean your room. Who said? Mom. Your mom, okay. How about, um, did you wash your hands? <laughs> okay. So your, your brother, um, who, who else might say that? Who are you, who are you going to say? Your mom, okay. Um, how about, did you use soap? That's my mom. mom okay. Um, that's mine, give it to me. <laughs> okay. Um, I love you. Mama. Mama, okay. Um, here, you can have it. Neither of us. Nobody, nobody says, okay. <laughs> Um, how about everyone in your seats, it's time to get started. Dad. Dad, okay, or maybe a teacher even, right? So, uh, let's see, can I give you some help? Oh, Dad. Dad. Friend. A friend, okay. Um, I will never leave you. Dad and Mom. Dad and Mom, okay. Um, and who knew, does that band-aid make it feel better? <laughs> Probably mom, okay. Um, so all of those things are, are ways that, um, are, are things that you kind of know or expect somebody to behave in a typical way. Um, and, and so we might also think that um, we're going to hear a scripture this morning that about, uh, from Jeremiah. And Jeremiah is actually a, a prophet who, who um, speaks a lot of doom and gloom. But he also speaks uh, in, in a couple of his chapters about hope and that, that things are, are going to get better and things are good and that you know, God doesn't, doesn't um, I'll never leave you, basically, is uh, so, something that God may say. So what are some typical things, that, ways that, that God either behaves or things that we might expect God to say to us? Any ideas about that? Okay, I, I love you. Um, if we read in Scripture, certainly, you know, we're reminded that God, you know, John tells us that God is love and that God does love us. Um, what else might, might God say? Well, I think one of the things that he, he would tell us is that, um, you know, in spite of, of everything that's going on, um, it's going to be okay. Like, that's the whole message of, of um, the, the prophets, basically, is that, that God... You know, even though things are looking pretty bad, um, God says, you know what, I've got this. Things are going to get better, and, um, and, and you're going to be okay. Um, I think that's one of the messages that, that, um, that God would tell us. What else uh, do you think God would say to us? Well, if, if we look at Jesus, um, I think, you know, I want you to be well, because Jesus certainly healed people. Um, and, and did all he could to, to help people. Um, he, also, he also cared about their, their spiritual lives, and so, so I think God would tell us that he wants us to, to um, you know, spend some time talking to him and, and building that relationship with him, um, and we can expect that God, God helps us to do that. 
Um, so those are some things that, as we enter this new year, that you know, I hope you'll you'll look for ways that God might behave, um, and things that God might say to you. Um, and then also, uh, the other side of that is is that you guys and and all of us, not just not just you guys, not just not just the three of you, but everybody that's here and everybody that's watching at home, um, God has expectations on how we'll behave, and that we can carry that message. Um, and share that message of hope and joy and peace that that God is with us um, with others because we can we can go around as as people who are oh my gosh this is terrible I don't know what tomorrow is going to be like I don't know I don't know what's going to happen I don't know what what more could you know we have this this virus what else is going to happen or we can say you know what you know God here I am things are okay I may not be feeling the best I may be feeling great. Um, but I know that, that you're here with me. And so the more that we can behave that way and people can then count on us to be bearers of good news, um, that's who God wants us to be. So um, I hope that as we enter this new year, that all of us, not just not you three, me, and all of us will, be, will commit to saying, you know what, we're not going to let the bad news define who we are but rather know that God is with us and the message of hope is something that we can share with others. And that's what's going to define who we are as God's people. Um, so let's pray together. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you challenge us to, to think about how you behave toward us. We thank you for your faithfulness. And so we just ask that as we enter this new year that, we would, <clears throat> that you would help us to be faithful as well, that you would help us to be your people to proclaim the good news, to offer the message of hope wherever we go. And to let others know that, um, that you don't leave us without your presence, that you're always with us, and we are grateful. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thanks for your help, and thanks for listening this morning. And once again, we're grateful uh, to have Caleb uh, Westcott with us to share in our time of special music. And before he begins, I should just mention, um, you'll notice that, um, that, that Nancy played our, our hymn for us and will be sharing and in, in leading uh, the, the other parts of the service in terms of music as well. Um, and that is because uh, Kathy is home quarantined, and we'll, we'll talk about that at the prayer time. Um, so she's not with us this morning, so I'm grateful for Nancy being willing to fill in uh, last minute. I, got the, I saw the caller ID come up last night, I thought, uh-oh. Um, and so Nancy jumped right in, and, and I, I'm grateful for her willingness to do that. And also because of um, the situation with um, quarantining and the virus and everything, um, the choirs are not gonna be with us um, this month at least, and we'll see where things go. And so Caleb, thank you for being willing to uh, help us out this morning to share your gift of music with us. I danced in the morning when the world was begun And I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun And I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth At Bethlehem I had my birth I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee But they would not dance and they would not follow me I danced for the fishermen, for James and John They came to me and the dance went on So dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he I danced on the Sabbath when I cured the lame The holy people said it was a shame They whipped and they stripped and they hung me high And they left me there on a cross to die So dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he I danced on the Friday and the sky turned black It's hard to dance with the devil on your back 
They buried my body and they thought I had gone But I am the dance and I still go on They cut me down and I leapt up high I am the life and I'll never ever die I'll live in you and you live in me I am the Lord of the dance said he So dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance said he To um, be uh, receiving our offering again using the plate at the door, um, or again for those who send it electronically or in the um, in the uh, through the mailbox, and um, we invite you to um, to do that. And uh, we greatly appreciate all the ways that you support the work of the church. In just a moment, we're going to invite you to stand for our, our doxology. But before we do that, um, one of the things I was going to do this during the prayer time, but I think I'll do it now because it's really a, a matter of um, our generosity and how we're able to share with others. Um, this, this actually, um, I, I have two notes here. One is from Lynn Heiss, um, and she asked me to share with you uh, last week, and I, I put that off um, until this week, uh, that um, we were able to put together 72 gift bags um, using the cards that you uh, gave for the first responders and uh, ways of sharing uh, Christmas with them. And so thank you for um, for, for your generosity in that, and all of those were delivered um, before Christmas to, to the folks that we wanted to, to have received them as a way of saying thank you for their faithfulness and their service um, to us. And then also, um, we did deliver the six families uh, uh, of uh, gifts for six families from the Angel Tree. Um, and so again, we were grateful for um, all of uh, the ways that you supported that ministry. And then finally, uh, this, um, not only did we um, do the uh, hygiene kits that we've been talking about and we actually put together last summer and never really got to the schools until, um, until the beginning of November. Um, those were distributed through the holiday giving of, of the schools, um, but then we also uh, were able to purchase food uh, from our outreach, um, uh, from our outreach money that, again, comes from you, um, to purchase potatoes and butter and, um, some other food items that were needed to complete the food baskets uh, for the um, for the schools that they were that they were giving out, and so um, we were able to share with families in need that way. And then at at the end of the day, when they had everything um, together, they actually had some extra things that they brought back and gave to us, and so we added that to our food pantry. And so you know, it's a, it was a good cooperation uh, cooperative effort, um, working in cooperation with our school system. And so this is a note from them. It says, uh, "Dear Pastor Batinger, we would like to take this opportunity to thank you for your generous." Donation nation for our Mantua Township families. Your kindness, especially in these economic times, has not gone unnoticed. Your generosity is truly appreciated and has touched many of our families' lives. We know that their holiday season will be much brighter because of you. With gratitude and heartfelt appreciation, we wish you peace, love, and joy throughout the new year. And that's sincerely the nurses of uh, the Mantua Township School District, Lisa Magris, Amelia Rizzo, and Holly uh, Vericia. And so um, from the three schools. So again, um, your gratitude is, is much appreciated. So we invite you to stand as we present um, and offer all of these gifts to God. Um, and then we'll offer prayer and then uh, share the doxology. Gracious God, we, we thank you for the gifts that, that uh, we can offer. And just ask that you would uh, bless all of these gifts for the use that they are intended. We thank you that we can share love with um, through, through finances and through tangible items that, that are offered. And so um, we're grateful that we can pass on your great love for us to others. We ask that you would bless these gifts and bless our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand?
Thank you. Please be seated. Our scripture reading this morning is from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 7 through 14. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd, a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and has redeemed him from the hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I thought, you know, when, uh, when, when Caleb, I heard Caleb practicing this morning uh, for the prelude, be, be still my soul, I thought, wow, you know, there it is again, not, not, you know, the Holy Spirit at work, not planning that, but certainly the message of be still my soul fitting with this scripture of, of hope, of healing, of restoration, of saying, you know what, it's, it's going to be okay. God has this. And so, um, as we think about that, you know, there, there's an opportunity that we have had, many of us have had, um, when somebody has come to you and says, well, you know, what do you want first, the good news or the bad news? Now, I know you've heard that. Um, so just out of curiosity, how many of you want the good news first? How many, and, and if you're watching at home, you know, type, in, type in the answer to this, whether it's good news. How many want the bad news first? Wow, okay, so and it's, most of you want the bad news first. Um, <laughs> that's kind of interesting. I, 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 you know, I, I thought about that, you know, and I guess it kind of depends on the situation and how I answer that. Um, if I try to anticipate what the good news is or the bad news is, maybe that might influence what the, my decision is. But um, as we think about that this morning in the text, in this, this text from Jeremiah, um, They've gotten the bad news first. They know what's happening, and it's not good. I mean, there's, there's not much hope in what they saw. Jeremiah was a prophet, um, as, as you know, um, not a bullfrog, but a prophet, um, going back to the song. Um, he was a prophet, and he was, he was a prophet um, to a nation that was on edge. They were looking into their future And they were expecting a huge change, and it was not one that was very hopeful because they stood on the, it was like standing on the edge of a a cliff or an abyss, knowing that that they were going to fall in. I mean, that's that's how precarious this this situation was for them. Um, And at the bottom of this abyss, not only was it not very hopeful, it it was really the end of their history as an independent nation. It was, they had enjoyed glory, they enjoyed, you know, David was a, a great king, and Solomon was very wealthy, and, and then there's a series of kings that were, were not so good, and so God said, you know what, you're going to be punished, and you're going to lose your independence, you're going to, I'm going to take all that away from you because of, of how you've behaved. And all they could do was stand in the walls of Jerusalem and look to the horizon and see Conquering armies. Now, if you've ever watched any of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, um, the movies, and and you know the doom and gloom of of the armies that are closing in, that's that's what they're experiencing. It was that sense of of you know 
there's no way that we can defeat them. We heard in Scripture, you know, they, they were too strong. There was just no way that Israel was going to withstand this, this attack, and they knew it. And you know, not, not only did they know that this army was too strong, but they also knew that God had told them, you're going to lose. You're going to lose everything that you have, and you're going to be taken away into captivity. And so these armies, are st- they're poised to sweep them off into their land, into the time of exile, and that was the bad news. I mean, they heard it. It was, it was there. It was, it was before them. I mean, Jeremiah is a big, long book, and, and it's full of bad news. But the text this morning is one bright spot in a book that's, that's, that only has a, a few short chapters. It's, it's actually Jeremiah 30 and 31. Um, those two chapters is actually called the Book of Consolations. Because in the midst of all that bad news that they're facing, God all of a sudden says, but, and through Jeremiah, here's the good news. This is what you're going to, this is, this is what you have to look forward to. In spite of how bad it is, how, how awful it seems, this is something that you can hold on to. And Jeremiah holds out this hope that no matter how bad things get for Israel and Judah, God will still keep his covenant with them. The promise that, that they are his people. And so in spite of all that's going to happen, God's not going to let them go. And God will turn back to the people with compassion, and the people can and will be restored to God's good graces. That's what Jeremiah is saying here. This passage is full of of good news. It talks about restoration. It talks about salvation brought by the Lord. It talks about return of exiles from the farthest corners of the earth. Even the most fragile, most helpless People that you wouldn't expect to maybe survive this will be sheltered and protected, God says, through Jeremiah. And this is all through the hands of a loving and forgiving God who will say at some point, you know what? Your warfare has ended. It's time for you to come back. You're my people. Everyone will be forgiven and brought home. And then verses 10 through 14 speak of a total restoration. Um, not only will they be restored, but their reputation will be restored. The nations will see them once again as people of God. And God will be their shepherd once again. Now, we've been enduring some bad news. And certainly, you know, we've just lived through a pandemic so far. I mean, we've gotten, we've, we've survived. Well, those of us who are here have survived that. Um, maybe you've had COVID. Maybe you've had you know, other issues through it, but, but here we are. And we've lived through some bad news, and we've been enduring that, and, and it continues. Just when we think things are getting better, maybe, um, well, it's like standing on the armies and watching those armies come, because once you think that things are not going to be so bad, all of a sudden, here comes Omicron, and now it's, you know, bypassing vaccines and, and natural immunity and, and all the things that, that we've kind of expected and hoped would help us, and here we are. But it's not just that. I mean, you turn on the news and it's, what else? Is it? It's inflation. You know, maybe, maybe prices will go down in the coming year. Maybe things will get better. But then you hear, well, no, it's, it's still going up. Or, you know, the, the, the supply chain um, interruption. And that's because of all these other things. Now we can't get things that, and that's getting a little bit better too. But, but who knows what tomorrow, what's going to be interrupted tomorrow that you won't be able to find on the grocery store shelf? What odd thing like um, mushrooms or, you know, with the thing that you would never expect to be impacted, cat food. Yeah, there it is. It's, it's there or not there. The good news in this passage this morning is for us. The good news is that there is always hope that in spite of how things look, In spite of enduring difficult times before, God has been with us. And God will be with us the rest of today, tomorrow, and the weeks ahead. He's always been a restorer. He's always been a redeemer. He's always been the one who works to save us. And God's love encompasses all of us from the most powerful to the most vulnerable. Nobody's left out. The other thing that we need to know about that good news is that in having this hope, we carry it with us, and we can be the hope and good news that people need. People in the world today, as I shared with the children, people need that hope. They need to hear that, that, you know, it's going to be all right. God is with us. 
I've started a new devotional, um, actually just yesterday. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's written by Max Locato when it starts on January 1st and it goes through the year. And when I opened it up this morning, I thought there, there again, you know, is one of those things where the Holy Spirit works because the, the devotional this morning was one in which we're reminded that we have a choice. As God's people, we can, we can bemoan the fact that things are bad and we can go into the world and say, oh, you know, how terrible it is. It's, and, and I need to hear this too because, you know, I tend to be cynical and, and skeptical and, 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 you know, I kind of will, will think, oh, you know, what do I do about this? How is this going to work out? It's probably not going to work out. But we can choose to allow that doom and gloom to encompass us or as people of God, we can refuse to be defined by our circumstances. The things that go on around us don't take away from us the fact that, that we belong to God. Jesus came to die for each one of us. God's love is for each one of us. And that's good news no matter what's going on in the world. And we can carry that message with us and refuse the fear that, that would define us and say in faith, God's got this. We can make the best of the time by committing to be people of God. And as we share love and joy, as we live out what it means to be God's people, God can use us to be peacemakers, to be healers, and to be vessels of hope. That's what it means to be the hope, the title of the sermon this morning, that we carry that good news. We can be those two chapters of Jeremiah in a world that seems like it's going to hell, that, that God is in control and it's going to be okay. And we have the confidence that we belong to God. So as we come to the table this morning, let us make the commitment to be the hope, to be the messengers of hope for the world whenever and wherever we can. Thanks be to God for the hope that we have in Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for good news. Sometimes news that's, that, that's hard to, to grasp, hard to, to focus on when there's so much going on around us. And yet, your word in Scripture is a testimony to the fact that you are in control. And that you don't give up on us, that you hold us and keep us close to you. And so we ask that as we enter this new year, that you would help us to allow that to define who we are as your people. To assure us that we can be bearers of good news in a world that so needs it. We give you thanks for Jesus who gives us that hope, who offers that hope and that, that peace. And we pray these things in his name. Amen. So as you prepare to come to the table this morning, I would invite you to uh, turn to page number 12 in the hymnal. Christ our Lord invites us to come to this table. He invites us who love him, who earnestly repent of our sin, and who seek to live in peace with one another, and to be bearers of that good news whenever we can. So let us confess our sin before God and one another this morning using the prayer uh, that's printed there. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news, Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God, amen. So this morning, uh, we were going to uh, use 
uh, a hymn and have you walk around with the communion offering, but I think we're going to wait and do that at the end of the service. So I invite you to, if you have a communion offering this morning, uh, bring that um, up as we sing. There's a song in the air after we share in communion together. Uh, there's a plate here, and so we invite you to place, place the offering there. The communion offering this month goes uh, is, is going to be used for the Doris uh, Kahn Memorial Fund for Children and Youth um, that uh, sends when we were able to go uh, our youth to the midwinter advance and to a camp and places like that. And so uh, if you'd like to contribute to that, we invite you to do that um, as we sing our, our closing hymn. We also want to update the prayer list. And uh, if someone would bring the prayer book up, um, there are a number of requests that we have to share this morning. It's, it's kind of lengthy, so bear with us. Uh, there is a lot of need uh, for prayer this morning. One that comes from last Sunday. Thanks. Um, Did you see the text from about uh, the donuts? It is on the yellow thing from others. Okay. I'll, I'll check on that. Thank you, Chris. Um, So the first one actually comes from last uh, Sunday, and it was one that was shared online. Um, and I'm looking to see. Um, sorry, I'm looking to see if I can find the one. Apparently there's one. Chris, what, do, you, do you know offhand what it was? I. There's a request online that we're trying to get here, so. Uh, from Alicia Doe, not, not sh uh, let's see. For Len and Doris, uh, Len has a very bad cough and um, it's left him very weak and they're going to check on him, uh, they're going to take him to be checked on. So please keep uh, Len Donat in prayers with this cough. Thanks, Chris. Um, and then uh, Pat Richardson asked for prayers last Sunday for healing for her grandparents. Um, her pop was in ICU, um, so please keep them in your prayers. Also, uh, Terry Smith, uh, prayers for her great nephew, Charlie Vasali, who broke both legs falling off a porch. And uh, Charlie is a very active four-year-old, and so um, he had surgery to uh, repair the brakes, everything went well, but you can imagine having two, uh, an active four-year-old having two broken legs is um, prayers for the parents and, and family as well, not just for Charlie. So um, please keep him in your prayers and them in your prayers. Also, um, from a text this morning, uh, prayers for the people who lost their homes in Boulder, Colorado wildfires. Uh, as you know, Blaze Cola Marino, um, uh, Doug and Janice's uh, son is in Boulder, and there was some concern about you know how he was doing. He is fine, um, and he's his house, his, his residence is fine, um, but he knows a lot of people that he's working with who had to um, evacuate, and um, so he shared uh, prayers for all of them, um, and they're still looking for th people, three people who are missing still, and so prayers for that situation in Colorado. Also, uh, this morning, we want to keep Alex Rossi in our prayers. Uh, Jen uh, placed this on the Facebook page, uh, but he is being deployed tomorrow uh, to somewhere in Asia. Um, he, he thinks, when I was talking to him, somewhere in the China Sea, but not sure where he's going to be. And it's an eight-month deployment uh, with probably limited access to communication. Uh, so, so Jen asked for, and family asked for prayers for Alex for safe traveling and for good health. Uh, given the situation, and also prayers for them as they um, allow him tomorrow to go and to serve our country. And so uh, keep him in your prayers. Uh, Amy Stanton is having some difficulty with her hip, and so uh, she's trying to treat that with rest and therapy, uh, but prayers for healing for her. And then this prayer request from Chris Shackle. Um, it's a prayer and a praise. Um, some of you may have seen it on, on the Facebook uh, page, but um, let me share this. This is for um, his best friend's daughter, Amy, uh, who went to the hospital last week in Indiana. Uh, she was having extreme respiratory issues, and they found blood clots in her lungs. And uh, she had surgery to remove the blood clots and to um, take out her pacemaker to put in a temporary one. Um, and they also found signs of MRSA. 
um, in her bloodstream. And so uh, he said, long story short, um, he asked for prayers, and God is good. Um, and praise God, prayers does work. She had the surgery. They removed all the blood clots. They took her pacemaker out, but instead of putting it back, uh, they determined that um, after after uh, correcting a bad section of artery, um, that her heart has been beating regularly on its own, so she doesn't need the pacemaker for now. So far, so good. Um, and she may not ever need a pacemaker at this point. And then also, uh, she has been declared legally blind for years. And while she was in the hospital, there was a lady talking with her who said that there's a new treatment that could restore some, if not all, of her eyesight. And so um, she is excited and wants to thank everyone for their prayers. And uh, I understand the, the folks in Indiana said that we must be good prayers because, um, because of all the good news that they got. And so we're, we're grateful for um, your prayers and for, um, for God's healing. We also want to pray for, um, again, a, a number of folks who um, are in need of God's healing. Um, I, I said I would update this. Um, Mark, Amy, Patrick, Stacy, and the Dran family are all dealing with uh, COVID. Um, Kathy, as of last night, was feeling okay, but she's quarantining uh, because of being with all of them. And um, so prayers for them as they, as they deal with uh, the the COVID uh, situation. And then uh, Kathy also shared with me that um, prayers for, for um, Justin Priest, their um, grandson who has seen a kidney doctor trying to determine treatment for, um, for him, and so continued prayers for Justin and for healing. And then um, also Ian uh, Priest, her son-in-law, um, who uh, was diagnosed with not, not COVID, but is hospitalized with um, pleurisy and uh, MRSA. And so uh, please, please keep him in your prayers as well. Um, and then prayers for uh, Rebecca Hickman and Lou Contreras um, uh, for traveling mercies. Um, their second flight is delayed. They're in Georgia waiting to get back to Kansas. Um, and that's requested by the Hickmans. And Tyler uh, is en route this morning to Georgia um, for his class. And so he texted that his um, flight was also delayed because they didn't load the plane evenly with all the luggage and they had to fix that before they took off. And I said, well, I'm glad they figured that out before he took off. Um, but prayers for, for travel safety for him as he uh, travels for school um, this week. I think that's everything. Um, I told you it was a lengthy list. Um, let me just double check and make sure. Um, yeah, so, um, and then, you know, there are a lot of folks who are either quarantined, um, schools are starting again uh, this week, hopefully. Um, some are doing virtual, some are doing in person. We want to remember our teachers, our students. Um, there, there are a lot of absences already projected because of being together through, uh, through the holidays. So we just want to keep everybody uh, in our thoughts and prayers as we navigate this, continue to navigate the pandemic together uh, for, for healing and safety uh, for everyone. So we'll remember all of those uh, needs as we share in our time of great Thanksgiving. So if you're watching at home, we invite you to when we, um, and actually for, for all of you as well, if you have your, um, your elements uh, with you, when we get to the point where we ask the, um, God to pour out his Holy Spirit, just to hold your hands out over your elements that you have there and at home, if you have them, uh, do that as well. Our great Thanksgiving is on um, page number uh, 14 in the hymnal. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth, or you had formed the earth from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. You sent a star to guide wise men to where Christ was born. And in your signs and witnesses, in every age and throughout all the world, you have led your people from far places to his light. And so this morning we ask that as we have heard these requests for, numerous requests for people dealing with illnesses and injuries and surgeries and traveling and so many different things, we ask that you would continue to shine your light into their lives, that they might find hope and healing and your presence. We thank you that we can, we can lift up our brothers and sisters and ask for your presence to be made known in, in their lives. And so we know that you hear us when we pray and are grateful that you are already working and, and bringing about your will. We thank you, too, for Jesus, who, through his, the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and gave thanks to you and broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you and gave it to his friends and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Now I invite you to hold out your hands as we ask that God would pour out his Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here. Pour out your Holy Spirit on our friends who are watching at home. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O oh God, on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the, one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast together at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, with the confidence that we are God's children, let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So now I invite you to uh, prepare your elements. If you can lift the, the top layer and then the second layer for the cup. And again, if you're watching at home, I invite you to prepare your elements. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Let us take and eat. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us take and drink.
let me share with you the announcements before our closing hymn and closing prayer. Um, first is, uh, please read your bulletin, but uh, kind of disregard everything in the bulletin as it related to announcements in some ways. Um, what, where we are right now is, I, I said that we would share this um, with you, the district superintendent has, has uh, requested that we um, actually meet together for worship and use you know, communion the way that we, we just shared it. And I know it's not your preference, nor is it mine, uh, that we do it, but um, we'll let you know where we are in February and we, when we get there. But if you would like to bring um, your own crackers, bread, juice, whatever with you, you can please feel welcome to do that as well. Um, these, these work at a pinch, but um, again, um, it's a good thing that we don't have to, to rely on, on the spirit, how the spirit works based on, on the quality of what we're using. So um, that being said, uh, we're grateful that, that we can at least share together. Um, and then also we're being asked to uh, put kind of everything on hold for a couple of weeks um, in terms of meetings and things like that. And so um, the Eve Circle will not be meeting uh, in January uh, due to the, the COVID uh, situation. Um, Sunday school classes, um, we'll kind of leave that, adult classes, we'll leave that up to you, but um, the class that was going to start, the online uh, virtual or the, the, the kind of hybrid class that we're going to start uh, next Sunday, we're going to put on hold for a little bit. Um, no children's Sunday school um, this week or next. Um, and then also the, um, all the things like the, the college gathering and youth and all those things, um, just sit tight and we'll get back to it as soon as we know that it's safe and we're able to do that. Um, hopefully just a few weeks and then uh, we'll start, same, th same with confirmation uh, that was slated to start, we'll, we'll um, take a step back on that as well. And if we can't start that um, soon, we'll, we will do that virtually and I'll let you know about that. But um, we're going to try to get through this next week at least and see where things are at that point, reevaluate. Um, so please be patient. Um, and again, you know, the good news is that, that um, we can do these things and we will be able to do these things, um, but we want to do it safely. And so that's, that's the key. Um, so um, there may be a couple meetings that we have over Zoom. We'll let you know about that. Um, nothing this week, but uh, finance and worship are coming up next week. And so we'll, we'll, we'll be sending out links and, and things to do that. Um, so here we are. Uh, it's Epiphany. Um, it's, it's God appears. And so that's what we'll hope that, that we can see God's presence in all of this. We'll stand and sing together. Uh, there's a song in the air, number 249.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that once again we can gather at this table and experience your grace, your presence, and your love. And we thank you that having experienced that once again, having known your presence in our lives, we can rejoice in the light and echo the song of the angels of peace on earth, goodwill toward all. We give you thanks as we go into the world that we are bearers of that good news, that people can see and know your love in us and through us. And so we pray that that would show always, wherever we are. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.